So my usual workflow looks like this. I make a lot of curves and then bang. We have an ultimate creation. But not everything is on curves here. Carefully check out the floor tiles again. So this is really common practice in my workflow and you will find me using it in almost all of my animations. So let's make this together. So here I have already made my tile pattern using array modifier. So here I will quickly select it, Control A, Visual Geometry to Mesh. And I will also press Tab, press P on my keyboard by loose parts. So we have each tile separately. I will select them again. Right click, set Origin, Origin to Geometry. Let's press M on, my, on our keyboard, New Collection. Let's name it Tiles. So our next step is to hide it from our viewport and our renders and I will also spawn a cube. You can spawn anything and anywhere, it doesn't matter. In our geometry nodes panel, I will press new and I will get rid of this. I don't need it and I will drag my tile collection in here, select relatives, separate children and plug it in. Up next, I am going to spawn in set position and combine XYZ. So with this node, we can individually displace our X, Y and Z coordinates. And we will be using an external object that is a sphere to displace our floor tiles. So for this, let's click on sphere and I will also go here and select bounce and also box type, bounce type is sphere. Let's hide this from our render view. All right, now we are all set. I will shift A. I will spawn in geometry proximity node and I will also get this sphere inside a node tree. Let's connect in here and I will also get in a math node. Select divide and I will divide scale by distance. And this simple three node setup gives us the axis of this sphere's location and scale. I will show you what I mean practically. Let's check in relative, it's important, and let's plug this in here. And now you will see that our sphere's location and scale is interacting with our tiles, all right? But let's get this sorted first, all right? I will gather, gather in a color ramp and plug this here. So let's go a bit closer to see what's happening as we are bringing it down, increasing its scale, the tiles are rising up. So if we just bring these a bit closer, the pattern changes and let's also throw in a float curve in the so float curve's value is basically from 0 to 1 0 being the lowest point which is here and 1 being the highest which is right there all right so we can also bring in a math node plug it in here and select multiply and if we increase it our highest point is increased all right now see what's happening so we have our effect taking the shape and now let's play with the float curve a bit like I said the one being the highest point can come here and it can go back alright now see what effect we have created something like this now you can also increase the height of it maybe play a little more it's up to you I will create something like this and now we have a design like this now let's also throw in a scale instance node and plug it here and I will also plug this information from our effector into the scale and we have our tiles popping in all right an easy node setup not a big setup for this cool effect and another great example of this trick is right here check out the floor animation on this one and with the same setup I also make the roof tiles And sometimes I use nodes to also assemble the main body of the structure. Check out the middle portion of the Starbucks booth. So this one is a bit different but works on the same guidelines. So let's make this together. So let's spawn in a cylinder first. And let's zoom in, press new in the geometry node panel and I will first of all get rid of the top and bottom face and get some loop cuts in. And first of all, I need set position and then split edges. And I also need a normal. 
so I want this cylinder to expand along its normal so I will just plug this in the offset now we have something like this I will also get in vector math let's say to multiply and I will also throw in a noise texture in we have something like this and now you will see that our vertices are also being affected by our noise texture but I want this to only affect the faces so I will show you what I mean I will gather in a capture attribute node set it to face or right, set it to vector and point to face and I will plug in a position node here and I will just plug this data in here and now see we have our beautiful effect in place and I will also get in a color ramp just get these sliders to here and I will also make some space here shift it to uh, duplicate it and place it in between and now all of this effect is being single-handedly controlled by this node but we will use an, an external object like a sphere as before to control this data all right so let's settle up our sphere display as pounds a sphere here let's bring the sphere inside inside our node tree and like before i will spawn in geometry proximity Se select relative plug it in here math node and simply divide scale by distance to get its location and scale values and set it to divide let's plug this in here and see what happens it's crazy stuff we don't like it I will also plug this data in source position so our vertices are not you know affected I will also throw in a color ramp like this and maybe also like before a float curve make some design like this so we have something like this going on and now finally scale elements in and plug this data into the scale and we have our cool effect ready now check out this building animation below assembling brick by brick this has been made with same setup which I showed and also this one it's a bit complex when it follows the same guidelines and lastly, one of my coolest works, the Rolex animation. Check out the brick walls at the bottom. So to conclude, I would like to say that a small node setup goes a long way. And you can use GeoNodes anywhere possible in your works.